Our next speaker, and our final speaker for the evening, I'm very excited to introduce, Miss Melissa Pierce. Um, she is the uh, founder and star of the Life and Perpetual Beta Project. She's, uh, she came all the way from Chicago to do this. She also just finished, she's coming off a CNN interview today. Um, she's, this thing is blowing up, it's great. Um, and it basically chronicles, it's a, a catalog and interviews of people, how, they, how technology has affected their lives and how it affects society. And uh, I'm really excited to hear about more about how technology affects us and through her travels in this, in this documentary. She screened it last night, apparently it went very well, actually. And she's also a ginger. So um, you, didn't get, you get rid of me, you get a pretty one. So anyway, uh, with a thirst for technology, Miss Melissa Pierce. Yeah. All right. This is supposed to be a video. You guys are just going to imagine behind me what's going on. All right? Because um, I'm a Mac person, and this is a PowerPoint. <laughs> Just keep talking into it, it'll eventually work. It'll eventually work. Then I'll start yelling at you. So, here's no. All right. If you want to hear me, you have to shut up. All right. <laughs> Creative spark. That moment when every neuron in your brain is screaming out at the same time. When you feel more like yourself than ever, what is that moment? What is that moment where your brilliant self meets your brilliant idea? And how can you make that happen faster? And how can you make that happen more often? And how can you make that serve you better? These are the things I was interested in when I started making my documentary film, Life in Perpetual Beta. I was interested in how technology played its part in this because what I noticed was that the people on the forefront of these technological innovations were a little more creative, a little more savvy, um, and were really going against the status quo of what we had decided for ourselves. Woo! Thank Woo! you. Woo! Now I can not yell and put on my sexy voice. And I promise to bring the sexy. So where was I? I was talking about the contextual revolution, how we're changing the way that we are thinking because of our reliance on technology. And I was interested in this, uh, just, you know, I sat around, whatever. I'm not a filmmaker by trade. When I started this, I had no idea what I was doing. I knew that a camera would empower me to get the answers I wanted out of people with ego, and I was absolutely fine with that. Yeah. So I started without a plan, I just dived right in, with, without a plan, without a budget, without a screenplay, and uh, I think it went pretty well. You know, what kind of idiot does that, anyway? This kind of <laughs> We're just not going to use it. It's oh, we works. have to use it. <laughs> right? If anyone knows anything about buttons, it's me. I have three children. Um, if you got that joke, raise your hand. So, this kind of idiot dives right in without a plan, without any experience. And I guess it did pretty well. You know? It screened well, it won awards. I was just interviewed by CNN. I won the hearts and minds of people from all over the world. And I was even, even asked to come speak here. Yeah. For you. And you're all killers, all of you, because I'm gonna guess that. No.
show of hands, how many of you have smartphones? Right. So most of you, some of you are still living in the Stone Age. But most of you are on the forefront of what I like to call the assault on the status quo. Where's my scarf? I want to be Steven Tyler. <laughs> Most of you are on the forefront of the advances in changing how our, tech, our, how our culture behaves. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to call you all the counterculture, and we as a group are going to go through five themes and how technology is changing the status quo, changing the very way that we live our lives. Who's this? What's he famous for? He's, they said he's famous for shadows. Scientists, you're scientists. He is famous for never growing up. And this is something that the killers of the status quo, the counterculture, is also not doing. We don't grow up. Grown-ups don't have fun. Grown-ups don't look at lolcat videos in the middle of their work day. <laughs> Grown-ups don't play words with friends. <laughs> I was doing that while all the rest of you were talking. Grown-ups don't do these things. Many scientists and scholars have looked at the brains of people who are on the forefront of this technological revolution and stated that they are in a perpetual adolescence. That their attention span is waning. That they don't have as much empathy as others. That we are perpetually teenagers. I have a 16 year old son, soon to be 17. I know that's hard to believe. <laughs> right? And it's not, this brain that they, they're uh, showing us is not very much different than a teenage brain. Can you guess which one of these is a teenage brain? Bottom one. Right? Bottom one's a teenage brain. Top one is a baby brain. <laughs> Just a little bit of baby brain. Bottom one, teenage brain. Now, maybe, maybe you already know this, but the teenage brain and the baby brain are very similar and they're both awash in chemicals, in hormones. And that the, the teenage brain actually parallels the baby brain in how much it's uh, changing, it's reinvigorating itself. Um, only the baby brain is trying to make sense of the world and how it fits in, and the teenage brain is trying to make sense of itself. And it's the same, you know, impulse control, emotions, all of those things are all messed up in the teenage brain. Ready for the adult brain? Here we go. Oh. <laughs> oh. Our itty bitty brain. That's the adult brain. But those of us who are picking up our smartphones every morning, those of us picking up our smartphones every morning before our feet hit the floor are checking our email, are checking our Facebook, are looking at what's happening in the world, and we are reinventing who we are, what the world is, daily before we get out of bed. So keep that in mind. You're taking in all this input, and what has to come out of it is very creative things. Oh man, I spoiled the surprise. You wasted a good surprise on me. Um, so, you know, what scientists are saying is that we're very shallow, and that's not shallow, you know? How could that be shallow? How could that not be deep? This is deep, right? Who is that? Nya Nya Cat, right? Everybody, even my four-year-old knows Nya Nya Cat. So how could that not be deep? How could sharing this kind of information not be deep? How could this not be important? 
And what I, what I see happening, and uh, maybe if you picked up the Wall Street Journal just a couple of days ago, you would, have, you would have read an article about how surfing the internet, about how sharing all of these things is actually making us more creative. Much more creative. So our, our brains are becoming much more like a teenage brain, but in a very good way, is that we're remixing and reinventing who we are on a daily basis. Um, and this is a, oh, look, that one worked. There we are. Those are the neurons firing, firing in the middle of a creative thought, which is kind of fantastic. I, I think I should have looped that. I'm gonna loop that and play that on my wall at home. I just love it. All right, who's this? Anybody? Ice tea. Ice tea.